Hello everybody, welcome back to Art Theories. This week we are discussing Vasily Kandinsky's Concerning the Spiritual in Art. But first, who was Kandinsky and why did he matter? Here's some information from trusty Wikipedia. Vasily Kandinsky was a Russian painter and art theorist. He was widely credited with being one of the pioneers of Western abstract art. He studied law and economics in Moscow, and he was quite successful, but at the age of 30, he took a career U-turn and left law to become a painter. He was also very musical. He played the cello and the violin, and this massively informed his understanding of painting. He was rumored to have synthesisia. This is a rare neurological condition where one's senses are linked. So for example, one might be able to hear colors or see sounds. After the Soviet Revolution, Kandinsky found that his spiritual outlook on art was clashing with the materialistic doctrine of the Soviet Union. So he moved to Germany and taught at the Bauhaus School. And once the Bauhaus shut down, he moved to France, where he lived until his death in 1944. But in 1912, Kandinsky wrote this book, Concerning the Spiritual in Art, and in about 60 odd pages, he outlines his very radical understanding of what painting is and why painting should move into the kingdom of the abstract. I'm not gonna lie, this was quite a hard book to read. Some pages were really profound and other pages just literally didn't make any sense to me. If you know me, you know that I have a troubled relationship with painting anyway, we don't always get on, but Kandinsky is probably one of my favorite painters. He's a painter that I teach to all my students. I'm an art teacher at a secondary school. And so I really, really wanted to understand the ideas and the philosophies behind this guy. So I read the book. Kandinsky believes that every shape and every color holds its own spiritual values. And he goes into a lot of detail about this. I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples here. Kandinsky believes that yellow is aggressive and disturbing. Blue is heavenly and profound. Green is restful and passive. Red has an unbound warmth and is the color equivalent of the sound of a trumpet. Orange is like a man convinced of his own power. Brown is unemotional. White is silent with the potential for noise. Black is also silent, but without the potential for noise. He talks about how different colors can be combined to create new meanings, or different colors in different shapes create different meanings, but that all gets very complicated. It's almost like mathematical sums, and I'm, I'm not even gonna go there, but read the book if you wanna know. As I mentioned previously, Kandinsky was a musician. He played the piano and the cello. And Kandinsky noticed that unlike music, painting was still representational. It was still focused on depicting things that already existed, painting a house or a tree or a person or a still life or a landscape, or whatever. Whereas music, on the other hand, was not trying to represent things that already existed. It was sounds and those sounds were free to be combined and to be played in different ways in order to create emotions and feelings and spiritual sensations. And Kandinsky believed that painting had to go in the same direction that music had already gone in, in order to enter the kingdom of the abstract. And when painting entered this non-representational phase, color and shape would be free to evoke emotions and spiritual responses in their viewers and to tap into something that Kandinsky calls humanity's inner need. Kandinsky wrote about inner need a lot in this book. It's quite a mystical concept which I sort of struggled to get my head around. And to put it simply, and to risk oversimplifying it, it's the need for humans to express themselves creatively and to feel strong emotional and spiritual reactions to art. According to Kandinsky, artists are these prophet-like figures. Doomed to a life of material impoverishment, these artists have a secret power of vision. They alone can satisfy humans inner need and their duty is the refinement of the human soul. And according to Kandinsky, the best way for artists to meet this inner need and the best way for them to refine the human soul is by taking painting into the kingdom of the abstract, 
into the pure artistry phase of painting. So like I said at the beginning, this book was not an easy read. It's quite short, but like a lot of it was like, just like going over my head. I didn't really get it. There's a few things in this which were so confusing, I didn't even mention talking about because I just don't think that I could talk about it in a way that would make any sense. So, you know, I picked out the bits which made sense to me. Um, he did have some really good ideas and there are a couple of pages where I was like, wow, that's really profound. Um, I think Kandinsky was kind of a bit of a dying breed. As the 20th century continued, we saw less and less of this priest-like mystical artist figures. Maybe the last one we saw was Joseph Boys, and we saw a lot more materialism. Ten-ish years after Kandinsky died, Andy Warhol's career was just getting started, and their outlooks could not have been more different. So it's interesting to see the way in which beliefs and um, ideas around art were shifting so quickly at that time. I think in contemporary art, we've swung massively in the other direction to Kandinsky. Like, I sense that we're afraid to talk about things in a sincere way, let alone an emotionally charged or spiritual way, or even a mystical way. Like, I think we don't want to seem, as individuals, cringe or... Um, there's so much irony in the way we talk about art. Oh, I'm getting pins and needles. Ow. There's so much irony in the way we talk about art that people are kind of on the defensive and would rather talk about art in a materialistic or a kind of heady, cognitive, slightly ironic way rather than to just come all guns blazing and to talk about the refinement of the human soul and these mystical spiritual ideas. Like people don't really do that. And when they do, you know, other people roll their eyes or smirk. And it is very easy to smirk. Oh my God, my pins and needles are so bad. It's very easy to smirk at a um, someone who's talking with these massive ideas like this. But I also wonder, like, have we lost something by not being able to talk about art in such a sincere and bold and spiritually charged, highly emotional way. Like, I don't know any contemporary artists who are talking about refining the soul of humanity, but what if we did? Would we gain something from that? Would there be a deeper experience that we could tap into that is currently cut off from us? I don't know. That's my thoughts. Let me know if you have an opinion in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Um, happy Christmas.